Howdy folks and welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another tutorial episode of Hearts of, 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 oh my god, of War in the East 2, oh my god, I'm mixing those games up now. Um, I apologize for uh, the length of the video, but um, I have to tell you in advance, this video will be, I fear, complicated, and I hope I'm doing my best to uh, simplify it as much as possible. And unlike the previous tutorials in which I used to give you advices at the end of the video, um, I, I want to give you the, the big advice at the beginning of the video. Um, the goal of this tutorial is to convince you guys that, uh, first of all, it is crucial to maintain and respect the hierarchy of the unit, so in case of the Axis, to have divisions, brigades and regiments attached to um, army corps, army corps attached to armies, armies to army groups, and army groups to the uh, supreme command. Um, and the reason of why is because, uh, yeah, it's because we will go through the video and uh, we will see why this is crucial. And second, um, I want to emph emphasize on the um, distance between units and their respective HQs. And these two variables are really the core of this tutorial. Um, basically, every action of the game is controlled by an endless amount of um, checks. They're called checks, leader checks. Uh, we can call them checkpoints, you know. Uh, you have to pass those checkpoints to, for instance, commit a reserve unit into battle or to assign uh, one extra movement point to the, I don't know, the 18th motorized uh, division of the uh, Wehrmacht and, and so on and so forth. And yeah, basically every action of, of, of the game is regulated by these um, checkpoints and um, whoever controls those checkpoints are basically your uh, commanding officers and um, I'd like to take a look at, at von Manstein uh, because von Manstein is one of one of the best uh, commanding officer that the um, the Axis has at least in 1941 um, we have discussed about the skills of the commanding officers and now we will de dive deep into the meaning of these numbers. And to understand this I have took advantage of an existing um, spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheet, that is um, available on the forum and I will post the link uh, to the post to the, to the topic in the uh, description sec section here below. Um, basically uh, le let's take a look, for instance, at the initiative. And yeah, so by the way, um, be prepared because I will I will swap between the game and the Excel spreadsheet um, constantly. Let's take a look, for instance, at the initiative of um, von Manstein. Now he has an in an initiative of nine, and the way things work um, is relatively simple. Um, there is a checkpoint at every um, HQ level, and the, the the base value of this checkpoint is, at, for instance, at the level of the Army Corps HQ, is 10. Now, if von Manstein have to pass a an initiative checkpoint, or in-game initiative check, uh, there is like a uh, roll of a dice, there is a probability that von Manstein will pass this uh, initiative checkpoint. That is very simple because it's um, 9 divided by 10. So it's 0 0.9, which means 90% of chance of uh, passing this check. Now, what if von Manstein fails to um, pass this check, these checkpoints. Well, then the the chance of passing these checkpoints is given to the uh, next um, HQ, sorry, to the next commander in the hierarchy. In this case, General der Panzertruppen uh, Erich um, Höpner. And Höpner has an initiative of uh, 7. So we have now 0 0.9, so 90%, but 10% of uh, failing 
this uh, checkpoint. And therefore we do have one minus. I think I have to put the brackets because we have to remove, this is just 10% of what is remaining here from the first, uh, from the army core uh, level times 7 divided by 20. So this is the same math, 7 divided by 20, but we are taking into account just 10% that is remaining from the previous um, army core. And now look at that, we have 0 0.035, which means 3.5% um, of passing the check, the, the initiative checkpoint at the army HQ level. And if we now go on, if, for instance, Höpner fails the check, uh, then it will be the turn of von Lieb, who also has an initiative of 7. So, you, you can play around with the math, but you can understand that the more, the higher you go in the hierarchy, at least for the axis, and the, the slimmer are the chances of passing uh, the leader checks or the leader checkpoints. Now, what happens if you directly attach a division to an army HQ? Well, now the probability, and we can have a look, for instance, at um, at the Totenkopf uh, motorized division that is directly attached to the 4th Panzer Group. And because um, Höpner only has a, an initiative of, uh, of 7, the math becomes very easy, because we, we only have 7. So, it the Totenkopf has a 58% of chance of passing the uh, check. In this case, the initiative check. And this should kind of convince you of why now you need to uh, respect the hierarchy um, in the, um, let's say, in the, yeah, in the, in the, the hierarchy in the command hierarchy, basically, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, because basically, uh, the more uh, divisions that are directly dependent to the army corps do have a much higher chance of passing the leader checks. Now, for the Soviets, uh, it's getting a little, a little bit more complicated, um, because, because, um, in August 1941, the, the Soviet player will lose all of its um, army corps, and um, yeah, the Soviet will have to face uh, just divisions, brigades, and regiments, and armies. Um, the values are slightly different. You can go to the manual uh, to if you want to, to have a look at them. But um, the let's say the main difference, or the two main big differences, are first um, for the Soviets is much more difficult and much more challenging to pass a leader check because of these, um, let's say, obstacles in the chain of command. And second, um, Soviet leaders are on average worse than their Axis, I would say German counterparts, because even some Romanians and Italian generals are quite bad, honestly. Uh, so yeah, for the Soviets it's like, it's like a, a um, double challenge essentially and for the soviets is actually um more convenient to have your best commanders at the level of the stavka which is the soviet version of the okh while for the axis um is much con more convenient to have the, your best commanders at the level of the army corps and this is why you need to respect the chain of command but what about the distance and for this, I need to uncover uh, this. So we have seen in the HQ tutorial that, um, like, where is, yeah, so um, there is a specific uh, range uh, through which um, HQs can deliver, let's say, uh, let's say influence to their subordinate units. In the case of army corps is five. In the case of um, army gr uh, army groups is army sorry is fifteen. In the case of army group is forty five, and in the case of the OKH is basically 
90. Uh, now, don't get fooled by this. Because I, I know that the first thing that comes to the mind of the average player is, oh, cool, I just need to keep, uh, let's say, the 8th um, Panzer Division within 5 hexes of the um, uh, 56th uh, uh, Motorized Army Corps. Uh, the 56th Motorized Army Corps must be within 15 axes of the 4th Panzer Group, the 4th Panzer Group must be within 45 axes of the of Army Group North, and so on and so forth, and you got it. Um, the answer is... not really. Um, it's a little bit more complicated, and um, I hope we can go through it right now. Um, there is also a... Uh, called here, the Command Range modifier. The way it works is relatively simple. Um, there is a penalty that is added to the uh, to the math of the calculation and I think we can even show it here. So this is basically the the final table in which you, if you want you can play around um, by adding the uh, skills of the core army, army group, and OKH. Like, for instance, I did it with von Marstein and the initiative checks, and um, at, at this stage, I have a 94% chance of passing the um, initiative checks. But basically, um, there is a range, uh, uh, sorry, there is, there is a penalty that, get, that gets added um, in the range calculation. Um, the way it works is simple. Uh, Army Corps, there is a... There is basically a... Um, let's call it, uh, it... It's called here the range bonus. I would call it the minimal range. Minimal range that your HQ units need to respect in order to maximize the uh, chance of passing a check or a checkpoint. And these, um, let's say, let's call them um, ranges, are indicated here. So a unit can be up to five um, hexes away from its um, superior Army Corps HQ, but the Army Corps HQ should be no more than 10 hexes away from its superior Army HQ. And why is this? Well, this is because um, there is like a, a small math, a, a relatively easy math, that is, is, is described here. And at every check, there is like um, a penalty that, that is added, and this penalty is is, is generated. is is very small, but still, I want to be fair with you and tell you that there is this is gener is run is so this penalty consists in a randomly generated number that varies between zero and the um, the difference between the position of the unit and this minimal uh, range. And then this is further divided by these fixed command modifiers. So one for the Army 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 Corps HQ, two for the Army, three for the Army Group, and four for the OKH. Now, what does it mean? It means that if you want to minimize this, you should keep your units within this minimal range. Because now, if we just copy-paste the numbers, you will see that all of these will go down to zero. And voila! And you see, now I have a 95% of passing the initiative check uh, with von Manstein, Höpner, Lieb, and um, Halder. Now, you see that the difference is not great, but, you know, maybe for the Soviets it could really matter to have 1% extra of uh, chance of passing a leader check. Um, where do I want to go with this? Um, if you're really, like, obsessed uh, with some objectives on the map, this means that if you, if you really want to keep your units 
tied together and to minimize this range um, difference uh, you basically have to concentrate your army group and OKH towards specific objectives on the map which means I don't know if you want to prioritize the, the march on Leningrad which is uh, from my point of view something that every Axis player should prioritize in the summer of 1941 uh, Then I would really recommend you guys to move the army group north and the OKH uh, North eastwards to keep them as close as possible to I don't know maybe for instance the 4th Panzer group and the 18th army which I think normally are the two units that uh, can take part in the uh, siege and in the, uh, I would say, occupation of Leningrad. And yeah, just to maximize the, um, the chance of passing these uh, leader checks. And yeah, so I think this is all for this tutorial. I hope I didn't butcher anything. I hope you guys could follow me, could could understand a few things, and uh, yeah, of course, uh, let me know in the comment section here below. I'm really looking forward to, to see what I could have done and said differently. And um, yeah, that's it for this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. Uh, stay healthy, stay tuned, and I'll see you all guys in the next tutorial.